I'm Chris, and this is Disney Updates. Margie will be on her way. She was uh, running just a little bit behind. So uh, let's go ahead and say hello to everybody in the chat. So hello, Mike. Oops. Mike from Crazy Mike's Fun Channel. And we have Sandy. Sandy Birdwell, 2427. Hey, we got Cynthia. Hey, Cynthia. And we have Mar in Memphis. Hello. And Margie is here now. So Margie has arrived. I'm here. So we should go ahead and get you want to say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. That's it, Margie. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hi, Mike. Hi, Candy Mom. Hi, Mar. Hi, Sandy. I think that's all I see. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's start. We're going to start with some merch. Okay. Here's your merch. Your favorite stuff. Nope. All right. This is coming from WDW News Today. And we got some men's t-shirts that are not t-shirts, but button-up shirts. I like them. For Haunted Mansion. So here we go. So starting off. New Haunted Mansion shirts by RSVLTS released. So Haunted House Guest short sleeve shirt, $70. Then next up, they've got the uh, Wall Creep short sleeve shirt for $70. Does it fall in the dark? I don't think so. Oh. It doesn't say. Also, they have the Afterlife, After Life of the Party short sleeve shirt, $70. Grim Grinning Graveyard short sleeve shirt for $70. You have the Hitchhiking Ghost on there, Marge. Mm -hmm. Up next, they have the Ghostly Gallery short sleeve shirt for $70. And then they have the Fright This Way Roper shirt sleeve, Roper short sleeve shirt, $72. Wonder why that one's two dollars more. Sure. This says fitted, so I think it's the same. It's just the same, but I don't know. Dude, oh, what what's a fitted me. short sleeve shirt? I don't know. I don't either. It's so they're all the same and just same price. It looks, it looks different like. on the sides. Is that what it is? I don't know. That's to me. Are they female? Maybe. I don't know. Because don't the female shirts, aren't they kind of more? It looks more narrow like it has. You know, can you go back up so I can see the men's? Well, we don't know if they're men's. We're just taking a guess, uh, aren't we? See how those ones are straight? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it is. All right. So it looks like they're all run about the same price. Same. I like the shirts, but not the price. Yeah, a little expensive. Yep. All right. Moving on. Yeah, right. I, I like them. We got some more, a <laughs> little bit more merch. We might have more merch tonight than what we usually do. So uh, up next, this is from WDW News Today. This is new Wil new Disney Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground Rucksack by Loungefly available. It said they were, Mark. Yes. So here we go. So here we go. Disney's Fort Wilderness and Campground Rucksack for $88 by Loungefly. Can you type in yes? Oh. Type in yes. I, Mara, are you still having a hard time hearing? Just just in case. There. Does that help? Okay, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Why well, want to make sure she gets her answer. Right. The backpack is made of green twill canvas with dark brown pleather straps. It won't be the same. Might be a knockoff. It's or... covered in patches, including a circular Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground patch featuring Mickey on the front main flap. Below that is a patch for Tricircle D Ranch. There are several small acorn patches. At least I don't think it would be the same, Mike. I could be wrong. A patch depicting the resort's reception outpost is to the side of the circular Fort Wilderness patch. Okay. Well, I hope everything goes well tomorrow for you. 
On the side of the bag is a meadow swimming pool patch. Below that is one for Pioneer Hall and Hoop De Doo musical review with the show's opening year of 1974. On the other side of the bag is a patch featuring tents and Fort Wilderness cabinet cabins with the resort opening year of 1971. Says the back and the bottom of the bag are a brown vinyl material. It was padded adjustable straps. Behind the main flap is a drawstring opening. Inside the large pocket is a padded laptop sleeve with a Velcro strap. The interior lining is a light tan color with all over pattern of Mickey, Chip, and Dale eating s'mores, trees, clouds, and the Fort Wilderness Resort and campgrounds. So it's Mickey, Chip, and Dale eating s'mores. They're eating trees, clouds, and Fort Wilderness Resort and campgrounds. That's what they're eating. Just s'mores? No, oh, s'mores. Oh, eating the s'mores. Okay. Not the trees, clouds. No, not the trees and the clouds, no. no. Just the s'mores. Oh, look at this. So, oh, there's Chip and Dale. With some random guy with Oh, a... I would hope that the very day, I hope for your sake. What's that? Um, that she gets her ears, the tubes are in her ears. I hope she's wondering how long it will take. I hope that right <clears throat> the very day. All right. Moving right along. <laughs> All right. This is coming from APNnews.com. Disney wants to narrow the scope of its lawsuit against DeSantis to, to free speech claim. So it says Disney wants to narrow the scope of the federal lawsuit against Governor Ron DeSantis to just a speech cl free speech claim that the Florida governor retaliated against the company because of its public opposition to a state law banning classroom lessons on sexual orientation and gender identity in early grades. Disney on Friday asked a federal judge for permission to file an, an amended complaint focusing just on the First Amendment claim and leaving to another state court lawsuit questions about the legality of agreement. The company signed with Disney World's governing district, then made up Disney supporters. The agreement were signed before DeSantis and the GOP-controlled Florida legislator took over the governmental body in the spring. The agreement shifted control of design and construction at the theme park resort from the new DeSantis appointees on the board of the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District to Disney. The DeSantis appointees are now challenging the legality of the agreement in the state court. DeSantis isn't a party in the state court lawsuit says Disney faces concrete, imminent, and ongoing injury as a result of the CFTOD's new power and composition, which are being used to punish Disney for expressing a political view, said Disney's federal court motion. The revised complaint would challenge this unconstitutional weaponization of government by seeking a decla declaratory Judgment that will allow Disney to pursue its future in Florida free from the ongoing retali retaliatory action of the CFTOD board, Disney said. U.S. District Judge Alan Windsor on Friday rejected Disney's motion to narrow the scope because of a procedural rule requiring Disney attorney to conf confer with DeSantis attorneys before filing such a, a request. The judge said Disney could refile its request after compiling with the court rule as email seeking comment was sent to Disney's attorneys on Sunday. The Disney request, as well as other recent motions filed in the state case, demonstrate how the fates of the two lawsuits have become intertwined, especially after Disney filed a counterclaim in the state case asserting many of the same claims made in the federal case. Disney filed the counterclaim after the state court judge refused Disney's request to dismiss the lawsuit. 
The fight between DeSantis and Disney began last year after the company facing significant pressure internally and externally. Public opposed a state law banning classroom lessons on sexual orientation and gender identity in early grades, a policy critics called Don't Say Gay. I'll be right back. All right. I'll let the dogs in. A punishment DeSantis took over the district through legislation passed by Florida lawmakers and appointed a new board of supervisors to oversee municipal services for the sprawling theme park and hotel. But the new supervisor authority was limited by the company's agreement with predecessors. In response, DeSantis and Florida lawmakers passed legislation that repealed those agreements. So... So, I mean, I, I can totally understand this. It just, I mean, if we're not allowed to criticize our government, then what makes us any different than any other country? <clears throat> I mean, I may not agree with your opinion, but I'll definitely stand up and fight for your right to have one. So, uh, let's see. I'm good. Use my mom's handicap scooter, tied it to the hand truck dolly, loaded up bundles of cut tree branches, and towed it to the curb so I would not have to pull it by hand. Work smarter, not harder. Okay. <laughs> so, moving on. Okay. All right, next up, this is from allears.net. This is a free lounge is open now in Epcot, and you have to see what's included. Hi, Mary. What do you think's included? Hey, Mary. Um, I don't know. Water. Like charging ports. Water. I don't know. So it says, most of us are well aware of all the construction happening over in Epcot, different Disney hotels and beyond. Really, it's hard to go to a park without seeing some type of construction, but now we've got news about something that has reopened in Disney World. A free lounge is back in Epcot. So speaking of that, one of the things I, I can't stand is people who get upset because of the construction, but those are the same people who get upset when they see things that need to be refurbished. Hmm. You know, it's just... Construction's all the time. Yeah. So uh, the Florida Blue Lounge has now opened in Epcot's Moroccan Pavilion. It's sponsored by Florida Blue Medicare. Oh, look, there it is. The Florida Blue Lounge is open in Epcot. Here's a look inside the Moroccan Pavilion. Should we hit it? Yeah. Sure. This is like one of my favorite countries, too. Hmm. I don't think we've ever been in there. Uh -uh. Nice. nice. So this lounge is available for all guests, but it does require you to sign up for mess messages and alerts from Florida Blue Medicare. When you sign up, though, you are consenting for them to use your email and phone number for marketing you. You must be at least 18 years old to sign up, too. The lounge is a great spot to rest around the world showcase and take a break from the sun. We love how much seating is available inside and how elegant and new everything feels. Not to mention that there are multiple complimentary drinks you can get here, including cold brew, tea, ju tea juice, and sparkling beverages. Wow. Plus, from 12 to 5 p.m., you can even get henna done. How cool is that? I don't need a henna. I don't either. Haley does, doesn't she? I need a rooster. <laughs> <laughs> The lounge is open from September 1st through November 18th from 12 to 6 p.m. Check it out on your next visit. I don't think I would like to give them my number out in text alerts for them to use it for marketing. Just block them after you do it. I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to hear about the three mousers. Three mousers? Food is ready. I'm a I'll be a ninja. All right. Okay. Enjoy your supper. What are the three mousers, Mars? I'm I'm lost. I don't know. I don't know, but I want to try the one in the back. Okay, well, they can't see it yet. All right. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> All, right. All right, this is coming from WDW News Today. 
And it's a new Dole Whip sampler provides diverse flavors for Halloween at Disney Springs. So it says a new Dole Whip sampler was recently introduced as part of the Halloween menu at Squirrels on the Water at Disney Springs. Is the sampler a cohesive dessert or will you will it leave you wishing you had sampled something else? So Swirls on the Water is located on the Marketplace side of Disney Springs. I bet you got good video. So the Dole Whip Sampler is $7.49. It's available September 1st to October 31st. So pistachio purple cheesecake soft serve garnish with roasted salted pistachios. Dole Whip Pineapple swirled with vanilla soft serve garnish with a pineapple wedge. Oh, I got you now, more. I got What's you. What's that? It's Mary Carol's three cats. Oh. I was like, what is the thing? <coughs> <coughs> Salted caramel soft serve with caramel sauce garnished with caramel, caramel crisp pearls. That took me a minute. Sorry. I do. I want to try the pistachio one. I think it would be good. Really? Mm hmm is, Before even diving into this dessert, we were impressed by just how Fun it is. It's a festive and shareable treat for a multi-person party with an array of palettes. And we wish that more that more treats like this would include a holiday menu around Walt Disney World restaurants. Hi, Mary. We're doing well today. Thank you. I hope so, you and your cats are well. We also wish that soft serve serves didn't start melting immediately as they all turned to piles of goo Ew. relatively quickly further solidifying the idea that this works best as a multi-person dessert. Yeah, I would definitely have, I wouldn't be able to eat all that. I would have to share it with somebody. <laughs> there, I bet the four of us could share one. We'll start with our least favorite soft serve, the pistachio purple cheesecake swirl. It's the same soft serve that star, stars in the Haunted Mansion cone, and it's just as un underwhelming here. It just tastes too artificial with the fake, Sweetness of the purple cheesecake. <gasps> Sorry, flavor overpowering the mild mediocrity of the pistachios. It tastes like processed candy, and while it's definitely fit, fits the Halloween aesthetic, this is the worst sample included in the dish. The one you want to try. Really? Yeah. I love pistachios, so. The pineapple and vanilla soft serve are is unchanged from its usual state. But that's all right. It's iconic for a reason. The swirl is delicious and you simply cannot go wrong with it. The pineapple wedge, though not festive, is a nice aesthetic touch. Up next, the salted caramel swirl tastes more a lot, much more seasonal and festive than the potassio pumpkin cheesecake soft serve, despite not being nearly as striking in appearance. The swirl is fantastic, towing a delicate line between sweet, salty, and refreshing to create a taste that's uniquely autumn. We wish more Halloween menus across Walt Disney World Resort would incorporate these flavors. <clears throat> so, it says, though some are definitely better than others, we think this treat is an overall winner and perfect dish to share with your friends or family while looking over Lake Buena Vista. Huh. Lake Buena Marcia's Vista. Marsha's no pistachio for her. I, I don't know. <laughs> what? I, when you get something that's good, all right, and I believe everybody, most people like Dole Whip, mm -hmm. right? Then they got to go try to recreate it. With what? Yeah. It's like P Pizza Hut and pizza. We got to reinvent the pizza over and over and over and over again. And it's just like... Well, if it makes well, you feel any better, I would only want the pistachio side. I wouldn't want the purple. Well, I, I meant the whole thing is, is Dole Whip is pineapple. Pineapple Dole Whip. I, I get it. So, but it's like, oh, we hit a home run with this, but what could we do? It's kind of like Disney and sequels. But at the same time, <laughs> pistachios... So I wonder if this would work, because pistachios is a, is a um, natural, like, melatonin. They say that you should take that if you, you know, if you have trouble, eat a couple of pistachios before you go to bed. It's not got natural melatonin, so it's high <laughs> cream. <laughs> All right. She loves the pineapple Dole Whip. 
Mike says he loves pistachios. It's no wonder he's not. <laughs> <laughs> good to hear you both are doing well. You're welcome. I'm good. Adam, Blake, and Reba, my cat, say hi to you. Adam, Blake, and Reba are good as well. Good. Glad to hear that. All right. Up next, this is from WDWMagic.com. Golden Dream returns to Epcot's adventure, American Adventure Pavilion after refurbishment. I don't know what that is, Margie. Do you know what the Golden Dream mm -hmm. is? Me neither. Is it, hat mate? is it that ship? I don't know. Chris, the car that has the problems, if it's a write-off to much to fix, donate it to Cars for Kids. I bet you. No, it, it's it. it's not something that can't be fixed. It's just it's just making a really weird. It it's. Hold on. I feel like we've had so. It, it's a heat shield, is what it is, and we had our mechanic. He pulled it off, but he didn't get it all. So now it's making weird noises. So we just have to have it pulled off. Uh, you know, it may have just rusted off or it may, it could have been part of that. What happened to my car a year ago when a drunk driver hit it. So, but, uh, that is the problem. It's making weird noises. We don't know what it is. We don't know if it's the brakes. So we're just, the reason why we didn't go any, do anything this weekend is we really didn't want to take it very far with the way it's sounding. So that's the reason why there won't be an adventure video this week. So, but the, and right now it's the only car we got running. The other car we got to get to. Oh, starter. Yeah, I, we believe I it's think. a starter. So, but other than that, but this car right now is the only car we have. Luckily right now, we are working at the same place until the end of this week because I have a new job starting next Monday. So I'll be working back in town where we live and I'll only be working four days a week. So And if all else fails, Chris could walk to work if he had to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if worse come to worse. Yes. So what's that? If the heat shield over the over the cat. Get replaced where you can have a fire from leaves. He told me that it would be okay. He said that you'd be amazed at how many people lose their heat shield. Yeah, he he. Our, our mechanic says this has happened several times to different cars like this. He just says they you normally just pull them completely off. So, but yeah, it's. I don't think it's a heat shield that's blocking anything from the ground. It's more or less from inside. So, but we hope. All right. We'll find out. So back. All right. So the Golden Dream ship is back on display at Epcot's American Adventure Pavilion. I don't think I've ever seen this. Have you? Not to my knowledge. I think this is zoomed in a lot. Nope. It says 100. Gee, when it rains, it pours buckets. It sure does. And I don't think the buckets ever stop here, Mar. <laughs> The ship has been backstage for several months for refurbishment and was returned to the World Showcase Lagoon a couple of weeks ago. I'm almost 100% positive I've never seen that. We probably have, just never noticed it. All right. There you go. Because if we would have seen it, we'd have been like, oh. I'll the fun. Golden Dream. Ooh. It'd be neat if they let people like take a ride. Oh, yeah, that would be yeah. kind of cool. Around there, yeah. There you go, Disney. One more attraction. There's a ship in Epcot. I had... See? <laughs> I didn't know it either. Cha-ching. All right, here we go. This is also from allears.net. I don't know why I said also. I think the last one wasn't. It says, we still can't get over this $10 souvenir in Disney World, and now you won't be able to either. What do you think it is, March? I don't know. So here's the thing. In some Epcot pavilions, Disney souvenirs aren't even specifically Disney souvenirs, but they are fun to shop for while walking around the world. Don't believe us? Two words. Sushi cat. I don't like either one. Sorry, Mary. <laughs> oh. It says you, yes, you can buy sushi cat keychains over at Japan's Pavilion and Epcot World Showcase. These cost $9.95 each, and you have no idea which sushi cat you'll get. There are five different designs you can collect. They're kind of cute. So, 
They're little. Yes, though. each one is a cat wrapped in its own piece of sushi, and it may be one of the best things we've seen in a while. As a keychain, you can hang it on your bag, in your car, or even off your phone, depending on your phone case. Disney had that ship covered with a huge invisibility cloak. <laughs> You can find these over, find these over its Mitsukoshi, along with a lot of other fun cat keychains. If you've got someone back home, back at home who loves cats and sushi, bam, you've got their holiday gift. I'm not mad at you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. As always, stay tuned, to all ears. Okay, so there you go. A cat keychain wrapped in sushi. So. Heaven's roommate, when they when she lived with them, we were there visiting, and I was like, those cats are just mean. They just walk up to Freya, and he just took his paw, and he's like, real fast, yeah. and just smacked Freya. I'm like, gosh, that cat's a turd. I guess I really shouldn't say I don't like cats. I'm allergic like to cats. cats. So, maybe that's what I should say. Yeah, you're allergic. I'm allergic to cats. So we can't have cats. Yes. So that's why we have dogs. Yeah. Oh, and you want to... I gotta show them that real quick. Also, the difference between dogs and cats are dogs are like raising babies, cats are like having teenagers. That's for so. sure. <laughs> so we got um Winston a new little hat last night. So he is the new sheriff in town. <laughs> and he just made my whole day last night putting that on him. Yeah, now if he'll leave it on. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's go back down here. To I this would one. bet that ship has an engine on board would not be good in the middle of the seventies. <laughs> and I guess until the guests, we have to wait for the wind to pick up to make it back to the dock or man the oars. So, um, I thought he was cute too. All right. Here we go. It's from WDW News today. Country Bear Jamboree and most of Frontierland glows due to possible ruptured sewage line at Magic Kingdom. That's not good, is it? No. So most of Front Frontierland and Magic Kingdom is currently closed as of 4.40 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday, September 3rd, for unannounced reasons, but possibly due to a ruptured sewage line. Says cast members, mostly co custodial and management, were blocking the way into Frontierland from both ends. Guests could still access Big Thunder Mountain Railroad via the pathway at the back of, the, of Adventureland. I thought he looked pretty good too, Mark. I bet it does stink, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, what happened? Something happened. What happened? It looks like it really, really big. Yes. It's not. I don't know what happened. Let me try and refresh it real quick. Did that fix it? Mm, right. right. <laughs> Morris says that brown strip down Liberty Street is real now. All right, there we go. All right. Uh, what looks like a pump truck was parked in front of Country Bear Jamborees, leading us to believe there was, has been some sort of leak. There's the pump truck. While wow, we saw the truck from near Tiana's Bayou Adventure, Twitter user Eric Chu saw the truck from the other end of the Frontierland. Anyone know what happened? Frontierland is blocked. There popped Did up again. on again. It's it's got to be an ad. Is what's is doing it that thing right there up there? I don't know. I just closed that one. Close it where? The little X up there on the right. Okay, maybe not. Yeah, these are horrible. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. 
The Orlando guy got a view from Tom Sawyer's Tom Sawyer's Island. Is it this? Yep. I don't know how to. I don't even know how you would close that. I can, you can't even read the page. Just right there, the Orlando guy. Yeah, but I'm talking about there. It just jumped back, didn't it? <laughs> So I'm trying to find. Okay, so uh, users three bridge Nick also shared. I'm sorry, also shared a photo of the truck with several cast members and crew gathered around it. Uh, next to the Diamond Horseshoe review, cast members were guarding parts of a vacuum system on a cart before crew members came to collect it. On my Disney Experience app, Country Bears is listed as temporarily closed. Guests, all, guests also can't access Frontier Trading Post or Pecos. Pecos Bills, Tall Tail Inn and Cafe. It says around 5.05 p.m. Eastern Time, Tiana made an appearance to offer guests some sort of interaction with the area. While it's blocked, updates as of 5.35 p.m. Eastern Time, the situation is resolved and Frontierland is back to normal operation and accessibility. For the latest Disney Park news, well, I don't know. Whoever this advertisement is, they need to get rid of it. So, In a way, that must have smelled like the old West. Remember, they dumped the waste out the windows. My girlfriend reached over 63,000 points on the Fetch app, so that's an extra $50 heading to Disney. Oh, nice. The CMs aren't wearing masks to block a smell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have some merchandise. So this is from WDW News Today. This is the new Disney 100 Marvel Lounge Life backpack featuring Mickey and friends as superheroes available at Walt Disney World. So there you have it. There's Mickey as Iron Man. And he's at, how many times do you have Mickey as, as certain people? So, uh, let's see. So Mickey and friends become the Avengers and over superheroes on a new Disney 100 Marvel lounge fly backpack available at Walt Disney World. We found the bag at Big Top Souvenirs alongside the Disney 100 Decade Collections. But only two were available at the time, perhaps put out my, by mistake. Keep your eyes peeled for this mini backpack as it's sure to be popular. The backpack matches the limited release pin revealed at the Walt Disney World 2023 Magic Happens trading event. Disney 100 Marvel Lounge Slide Backpack is $78. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. I don't know if I like that. Says the backpack is patterned with comic book covers featuring Marvel characters reimagined as Mickey and friends with what if descriptions on them. Some of the mashups include Mickey as Iron Man, Minnie as Captain Marvel, Daisy Duck as Ghost Spider. Ghost Spider? I don't think it's Ghost Spider. It's Gwen Stacy's Spider Man. And Goofy as Bruce Banner and the Hulk. The straps and edges of the back are black pleather. The zippers are silver. This is a small front pocket. Zipper pull features the Marvel and Disney 100 logo. So the Marvel Lounge Life plaque is on the side of the bag. It has a small handle on the top. The interior lining is black, featuring the Marvel and Disney 100 logo stacked on each other. Are you going to be storing your essentials in this Disney 100 Marvel lounge fly backpack? Well, let us know in the comments. Don't delete it yet. Marcia, D Daisy, Spider-Man? It. Uh, so if you've never seen... So there's... The Spider Verse. Um, can I click out of it? Yeah. So, uh, so there's the different 
if you've ever seen the Spider-Verse where there's multiple the different Gwen Stacy becomes Spider-Man in one of those universes. Mm-hmm. So she's Daisy is actually Gwen Stacy Spider-Man. Gotcha. Is what it was. I don't know how why who this person said Ghost Spider. I've never heard that be, being used. I could be wrong. Maybe it is correct, but I've never heard that used. Right. I just know it's Gwen Stacy's version of Spider-Man. Right. So Mike, I just read so Mike's saying one thing you should buy before a park trip is extra charging cable in the block that plugs in. You don't want to pay park prices. I just read, and somebody gave the tip at Disney or at Disney World. If you don't have your charging block, but you have your your charging cord, yeah. plug it into the USB of the TV, and that will charge your phone. I'm not a Loungefly fan. I haven't seen the Spider Verse. Right. Yeah. Well, I the it's a pretty popular. It's actually the last one. The second one. Did very well, and it's not done by Disney. Uh, it's done by Sony. So, but but it's it's just basically different Spider Mans from different different like kind of like what's going on with the multiverse with inside Marvel, except for this is all the different Spider Mans from those different universes are coming together sometimes. So. All right, here we go. Moving on. This is from WDW News Today. This is uh, Disney's Grand Floridian Resort lobby restored temporarily as railing constructions concludes. Isn't it sad that I don't even notice anything different? (laughs) (laughs) Margie. It says construction materials, vehicles, and walls are gone from the lobbies of Disney's Grand Floridian Resort as constructions wrap up on the railing above. Mar says she's a multiverse clueless also. Right. <laughs> Furniture and decoration are back in the lobby for guests to enjoy. Oh, there's are those pictures or are they just No, that's Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, they're using the same. <laughs> White scrim remains around some of the upstairs balconies although work may be complete. Some scrims were removed in August. So it's kind of hard for me to sh- read and show the picture at the same time when I have this. It's a, it's this here, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's crazy to me. Is there any way? The arrow? Oh! <laughs> Just kick me to the top. All right. I thought there was a way to kick out of this, but I guess not. So it says the lobby itself is set to be remodeled through, though not until next year. I thought they already did it. They've been doing it, I think. So reportedly, the lobby remodeled was scheduled to begin earlier this spring, but they were unable to meet that schedule rather than start construction and interfere with the giant gingerbread house the resort builds annually the remodel was delayed so i think they might have done some but so back in december 2022 disney confirmed the lobby of disney's grand floridian resort and spa would be refurbished during the resort's 35th anniversary which was on july 1st, 2023. For now, the lobby retains its vintage theming, including chandeliers and a giant birdcage. Isn't that the elevator? Yes. Oh, is that the is that the start? Or oh never mind. Never mind. I see. There's the birdcage right there. Yeah. No, I'm on board. Oh, so there's no more carpet. There are more modern chairs and tables on the second floor overlooking the lobby. I thought it was all carpet. Maybe I was wrong. It, well, it might be down on the bottom, but it might mm-hmm. once you get up, it might not be. I guess maybe right down the middle it's all yeah, carpet. Maybe. 
Oh my goodness, that was good. What about recharging your charging block in the airport, Mike? So the lobby elevator is also back open, having been closed when construction vehicles were parked in the center of the building. I was there two weeks ago. You should see the construction. In Disney in a whole or just at this hotel? So it says, how do you feel about the future of Disney's Grand Floridian Resort? Let us know in the comments. We've uh, never stayed there and don't, probably never will. Don't really care. It's just too, I don't know. I feel like if you've never been to Grand Floridian and you don't know what it's got, what it's like and you're not going to go there, wait till they open up the cake bake shop. You get the same feeling when you walk in that place. Maybe it'll be like different. Like you don't belong. But maybe it'll be different <laughs> since it's there. You know what I mean? Maybe it'll be different. So you think it's Carmel, Indiana that's the problem? I think everybody from Carmel is a little bit. <laughs> could be blue shoes, but who am I to judge? I'm not. I just don't know. I just know that everywhere we've ever stopped in Carmel, I've felt like they... No. You don't think so? No. We went to that museum and they were really oh, that, nice. that We thought that was in Noblesville. No, that was, was in Carmel. Carmel. We she were just really down the nice. street. She was really nice. Yes. That was really nice. But like the gas stations, they can make you feel like you're just in the wrong town. So if you're wondering what museum we're talking about, if you can remember watching our videos, it was the Miniature House Museum. That we went to. That was in Carmel, Indiana. We stopped. I'm telling you what. I have never been to a gas station. And correct me if I'm wrong. When we went what, a couple weeks ago, like last month, to Lennox's party. Yeah. And we went to that gas station. And it said I couldn't get gas because we weren't a member. Yes. I knew that, Margie. I did not I know told, that was a thing. I told you when we pulled in there. there but that, how is if, that a thing? Well, here's the thing. If people are waiting in line, obviously it's a membership. Oh, I just think it's ridiculous. If I, and I, I need knew, gas, and I told you. So I, they would have just told me no? They run out of gas? Yes. Shame on them. Okay, I'm looking for... Oh, by the way, if most of you don't know, I do still get on Instagram. Margie takes care of most I'm of the Instagram now. I'm not good at Instagram. So. I'm learning. I don't even know how to... Chris had to show me how to post pictures, even. I don't think she knows how to... I don't know how to do anything. There we go. Okay. Now we're good. Oh, my. Holy cannoli. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. Did you want to show them? Oh, you can hold it up. So you can it, you just held up for the dog. There's one that Miss Cynthia just sent. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this one or not. But... Scaffolding outside. It looks, I think the best thing of that one picture right there is how bright and sunshiny it looks. It, 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 it's just one of those, Mike, that it, it you had to be a membership. It's kind of like Costco or something like that. But then we had to drive down the wall. <laughs> it wasn't even that far away, Margie. It was No, just... but you had to go around the roundabout. It doesn't tell you to turn. It just says, take this exit. It's... No, I don't like those towns. I don't like Carmel. I don't like Noblesville. Well, you know, because of all those, that one guy believes it because all those, uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because we have so many roundabouts. That's why there's tornadoes. Because of the... Because of the traffic going around. Yeah, but what he called it something. <laughs> traffic circles. Yeah, but yeah. He called them traffic circles. It's he... been causing all the tornadoes because <laughs> of the vehicles going around the circles. But then about the disturbance of the... I don't know. That's just like the lady thinking that we need to move the deer crossings to... Uh, more like where More children like, yeah. crosses because there's too so, many car accidents yeah, too many with accidents. them. So, because she thinks if you move the deer crossing signs, the deer, the will, deer will, will cross where the deer crossing sign is. So, all right, let's move on. This, and this was a lady who called into a radio station and said, that. "All right, this is uh next one's coming from allears.net. 
Uh, Gideon's Bakehouse reopens in Disney World. So heaven is going to be excited. Gideon's Bakehouse in Disney Springs recently faced some serious issues. In fact, the store was closed for several days in a row. We've been anxiously awaiting the new news that the store is back up and running. And now we've got some good news to share. $5 said she didn't even know it was closed. Probably not. She only goes once a month. <laughs> On September 3rd, 2023, Gideon's Bakehouse reopened in Disney Springs. We can finally try the new September menu, including those sweet, sweet cookies. Over on Instagram, the bakery confirmed the news with a happy announcement. Gideon's Bakehouse is officially open for business. Yeah, it was long when, when we went too, and we just, they like, something about how long won't be. Yeah. So we went back, but. Gideon's Bakehouse house first closed back on August 31st due to an issue with the air conditioning. The bakery remained closed through September 1st and 2nd as a crew worked on fixing the AC. We're so happy to see this spot open again. We've missed you, Gideons. We can't wait to check out the special September cookie flavor this month. In the meantime, we're always on the lookout for the latest Disney news, so stay tuned for more. So, Gideons. Crumble. Crump, yeah. I don't know if you've any, any of you have ever had crumble, but Haley got crumble a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And they have, like, what is it, cookie of the, the week, yeah. I think it is. They're like $25 for five cookies. Yes. We haven't heard anything from heaven in ages. She's doing well. Yeah. You have special beer that you can read this time. I'm going to work across. <laughs> <laughs> heaven goes once a month, Candy Mom. And she always says the line is long, no matter what time of day. Yeah. So uh, what's funny is some of you might not know this. I think some of you know that I go to trivia every other Wednesday at a bar uh, in a city not too far away from me. But one of Heaven's former roommates goes to. Yeah, goes to. She uh, that lived with her down there at Disney. She moved up here. She's actually originally from Milwaukee, not Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And uh, she ended up meeting a boy who is from Ohio. And she lives about half an hour yeah, away. she lives about a half an hour minutes. away from us. And I knew she was up here, and she, probably the only people she knew was was his family. And uh, I was like, well, maybe she'd like to see some faces she knows. Besides that, since she's met me and Mark, met, she's met me, Margie. She's met my brothers, my sisters, because my brother paid for them to have a room in Vegas one time. So they all met my brother and my my two brothers and my sisters, and hung out in Las Vegas with them. And uh, so, and that's who I go. I go with my sister and my two brothers to trivia. So I just contacted her and said, hey, would you like to go hang out with us at trivia? And she said, yes. So she's been going. So Heaven's former roommate and good friend has been going to trivia. Heaven has also every other um, been playing softball. Yeah. So yes. here's a picture of her in her little uniform thing. Oh, there's that one, and then there's this one. It's like her and her co-workers. Um, so, that's and, the latest picture I have of her. And her and the oh, those roommate this. and her other roommate and her other and her other roommate's sister are be going to be going to Disneyland here pretty soon. I do have this so. one. They got their Halloween um, attire on. Oh yeah. So that was pretty fun. So you've adopted a daughter. <laughs> Crumble <laughs> is delicious, but very expensive. I cut mine into quarters to stretch their... Yeah, Haley cut them all like in smaller pieces. But my word. And there was one It was... I didn't like it. She had me taste it with something apple. I did not like that cookie at all. Right. <clears throat> all right. Or when I would get the Sorry. Gideons, I cut them up. Heavens, we've never... I've never seen the cookies from... I mean, we right. went inside, but Heaven always gets a cookie and the... Drink of the I moment. think when we went into Gideon's, it reminded me more of Harry Potter. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So. All right. Moving on. Uh, Disney Dining. This is from Disney Dining. All right. Uh, Disney goes viral hanging. Disney guest goes viral hanging off attraction. So. 
Well, Disney World in Orlando, Florida is known for its enchanting attraction, larger than life characters, and a, a commitment to creating the ultimate vacation experience for guests of all ages. While Disney World Resort is home to four theme parks, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Disney, Hollywood Studios, and Disney Animal Kingdom, Disney World is also home to two water parks, Blizzard Beach, Temporary Closed, and Typhoon Lagoon. Each Disney park includes different attractions, shows, meet and greets, and much more. Magic Kingdom is known as Disney World's most popular park due to its iconic attraction, while Disney World Resort guests Walking down Main Street, USA, will spot Cinderella Castle at the center of the Magic Kingdom. Disney World guests can experience attractions such as the Pirates of the Caribbean, Jungle Cruise, Haunted Mansion, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, uh, Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid, The Mini Adventures with Winnie the Pooh, Peter Pan's Flight, It's a Small World, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Space Mountain, and many more attractions. Magic Kingdom is home to different lands that guests can explore and immerse themselves, such as Tomorrowland, Frontierland, Fantasyland, and more. So, in a viral TikTok, a Disney guest was caught hanging out of the attraction's boat to collect money. This guest can be seen hanging out of the boat, reaching his hand in the water to collect the change that is thrown from it. It's a small world. Guests tend to throw their hair ties, change, and even gum on the attraction. Rude. Okay. What in the hello? Oops. Hold on. Oh my word. All right. Where did it go? Did I miss it? Okay. You idiot. So I think the one thing that upsets me about that is where that money actually goes. What? It doesn't, it looked like he pulled out something different. I don't know. So it says, while the act of tossing coins in the water may not be officially encouraged by Disney, it has taken a special meaning for some guests to try and wish for unity. Guests who partake in this tradition may view it as a way to contribute to many the spirit of unity and harmony that the ride represents. Other guests throw coins so they feel like active participants in the enchanting world of It's a Small World. It allows them to contribute to the magic and leave their mark on the ride, even if temporary. Officially, Disney does not endorse or encourage guests to toss coins into the water on It's a Small World. The primary concern is the potential impact on the ride's mechanical and electrical system, as well as the ecological impact on the water and aquatic life. Disney conducts, conducts routine maintenance to remove coins and other debris from the ride's water to prevent damage and ensure the safety and efficiency of the attraction. For certain attractions, signs are posted at the ride's entrance, kindly requesting guests not to throw objects into the water. So. Well, his hand was on, I don't know if it was like the rail or whatever. It moved, I don't know. No, no. I just know that Disney donates that money to give kids the world. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, at least they do so something to me, good with it. But. Right. So to me, for you to be reaching in there and taking it, it's like stealing from those kids. That's just your opinion. Yes. I, I, I mean, I'm not saying I don't agree. I just, why would you hang off of? A... I don't know. I don't. All right, here we go. I would laugh so hard if he fell in the water, and he looks like a yellow banana. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying he looked like that? RJ has a hard time finding the camera. Yeah, I think it's over here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here it is. Last thing we got for the, for the day. This is from WDW News Today. And this is, we've got some uh, merchandise. So Encanto Spirit jerseys, bucket hat, Bruno t-shirt, and more at Walt Disney World. So new Encanto merchandise has arrived. At Walt Disney World, in time for guests to plan their outfit for the upcoming Mirabelle meet and greet, we found the Encanto Spirit jersey, Bruno t-shirt, apron, 
Bowl and Photo Frame and World of Disney at Disney Springs. The matching Encanto bucket hat was in Curtain Call. Collectibles at Magic Kingdom. And the rest was in Once Upon a Time at Disney's Hollywood Studios. So this is the Encanto Spirit jersey for $79.99. says, uh... The spirit jersey is white with a colorful mural of Mirabelle and her family across the bottom. On the front is Mirabelle, Luisa, Isabella, and Camilo gathering among tropical leaves, flowers, and giant butterflies. Pico Antonio's toucan friend is on the left breast against a green palm leaf. On the back are the words time to shine and puffy white letters also set against colorful plants and butterflies. It says Uncle Bruno and Antonio with Pico and the Jaguar Parse are on the bottom surrounded by flowers and a couple of friendly rats. So Dolores is on the left sleeve listening carefully to all the go going ons in the Encanto. She set set against a yellow circle with flowers around it. So two more of Bruno's rat friends are on the right sleeve. Next up is a Bruno tee for $34.99. The green tee features a rectangular image on the front. Bruno is pictured looking shy amongst giant leaves, wearing his purple tunic and green poncho. One rat is perched on his head and another on his nearby leaf. A hooded Bruno spirit jersey was previously released. So, Encanto apron for $34.99. There's uh, Chanel Mirabelle's mother, Julieta, as you cook in this teal green apron. Long. So the apron features Mirabelle, Isabella, and Louisa. But we aren't supposed to talk about Bruno. That's right. <laughs> it has a dark blue pocket decorated with red, blue, and yellow flowers. More flowers, leaves, and butterfly lines the bottom. The straps are dark blue. Next up is the Encanto Bowl for they don't know how much it cost. So, the Black Bowl features Casita, the Madrig Madrigal's family home, on one side. Flowers wrapped around the rest of the bow. The image of Casita and the flowers repeat. It's a stoneware bowl and it is both dishwasher and microwave safe. Yeah, I think that one was supposed to say bowl, but it said bow. Oh. Isabella photo frame for $29.99. Well, we know the bowl is probably more than that. <laughs> so, the acrylic photo frame has a border of flowers, some layered for a 3D effect with Isabella's picture in the bottom right corner wearing a pink dress. The frame holds a 4 by 6 photo. The back is blue. Next up is the Encanto bucket hat for $34.99. The panel of the bucket hat alternates between blue and black with blue stitching. So it says Isabella is pictured on a blue panel next to a black panel of pink flat flowers. I don't think I could pull off wearing a bucket hat. Yeah. Louisa is pictured on the next blue panel. A butterfly is perched on her fist. The fourth panel features a pink flower and yellow flower. Encanto Youth Hoodie for $34.99. So the Zip Up Hoodie features Bruno, Camilo, and Antonio. It has pockets on the front. It's blue with an all-over pattern of the character plus yellow and green plants. The inside is white. Next up is the Mirabelle Youth shirt for $31.99. The white shirt is inspired by the shirt worn by Mirabelle. The scalp, sleeve, and hems are lined with bright teal thread. 
The square neck features pink leaves with teal and pink flowers and teal butterflies. Mirabelle herself is pictured in the bottom corner with a butterfly on her finger. Next up is the Encanto sweatshirt for $64.99. The pullover sweatshirt is white with all of the young members of the Madrigal family on the chest. Luisa, Dol Dolores, Isabel, Camilo, Mirabel, and Antonio. A few flowers and leaves adorn the image um, along with embroidered butterflies. La family S. So La Family S. Dodo, Family is Everything, is on the back in teal cursive. I guess it's La, it's la fama, Familia S. Dodo. Mm -hmm. yes. I'll, to, I'll wait till you're done reading. Go ahead. Flowers are next to the top of the phrase, while Casita is pictured at the bottom, a butterfly flying over it. The hood has drawstrings with yellow ends. Encanto at Walt Disney World. Oh, Mirabelle will soon meet guests at Fairy Tale Gardens and Magic Kingdom. We've talked about that. So not only that, but one thing they are not offering that we are offering here, or we have what's tomorrow night at eight o'clock? Trivia. Trivia. And if you win that game, you will get a guy leaning off a boat. <laughs> it's not a guy leaning off a boat. You'll get a banana. A banana. Top, Top banana, banana award. award. Not only that, but if you win the entire series, what do you get, Margie? The Encanto Magic Candle. The Encanto Magic Candle, so you can make your house somewhat like ca Casita. So Mike says once in high school on March 4th, we asked the teacher the date, and she said March 4th. The whole class got up, marched out of the room, marched back in, we sat back down. Marsh says, I'm not a fan of bucket hats. I just don't think I could pull off a bucket hat. Looks like a peacock exploded on the hoodie. Um, Habla Espanol, Chris. No. <laughs> I know very little. Yeah. That's... I know enough to get me to say hello. How are you? So I, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, Margie, sister is married to a man from Mexico, and they have five kids, and their oldest has... Two boys, which are those are our great nephews. Great nephews. And uh I sat down to read a book. It was all in Spanish. So I can somewhat <laughs> I can somewhat say the words. I don't know what I'm saying, but I can do it. But when I started to say those words, it was like the look on his face was he never seen a white person speak Spanish <laughs> before. <laughs> so his eyes just got wide when he seen me. <laughs> <laughs> does the banana come with ice cream and chocolate sauce and whipped cream? No, it does not. That'd be a hot mess to send, wouldn't it? It looked like it came with water. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think it's going to do it. So, uh, I have been putting out a short every day. Uh, so, since we didn't go anywhere, probably most of my shorts are going to be stuff I find on. The internet to put out there. I've been putting out hidden gems for Disney World. I've been putting stuff out for Cap for uh for Kings Island, and then of course the ever popular shorts. My wife, wow. So. <laughs> we did do something this weekend that we have not done for a very What's that? long time. When they had no nose party, yeah, we went to a birthday party for my sister's mother in law. Yes, and. We did not leave until it was, well, almost one o'clock. Yes. And that's the latest we've stayed out in a very, very long time. Yes. It was I, way past my It was a time. lot of beer, too. I wouldn't know. I know. I had one pina colada and two sprites. Oh. But, yes. Wow, Margie. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm sometimes when he, I don't even know he's doing it. Like the other day when I, Got out of the car, I'm just walking up to the house, and boom, I hear, they have some. I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go again. <laughs> just the, you probably were putting the X and the syllables in the wrong. <laughs> so, Maybe, oh, I don't know. By the way, we have had a lot of people watching the replay, 
So uh, if you are watching the replay, and I hope you stayed this long, if not, you're not going to hear this. I probably should say it at the beginning too. But if you would like to join us live, we do Disney updates at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time on Mondays and Thursdays. So I'm not always on time, but I'm here. <laughs> right. So I don't maybe. But then again, maybe people watch the replay because they're not available at this time. But if you are and you want to join us, that is the time. Mike, so. you're too much. Chris, when you put out your shorts, does Margie wash them first? <laughs> Clean shorts are the no. best to show off. Actually, I, uh, I've i been trying to watch what another YouTuber's been doing. And I think you guys know her. Her name, her name is Megan Moves. Yes, you should put that at the front. And for the longest time, she has uh, been doing a lot of shorts. And I don't know if you guys remember, but she started a couple of years after I did. Like I'm she, doing great. Yes, and Megan is at over 24,000 subscribers. I'm so, so happy for her. Yes, yes. I was very surprised when I seen she was that high. I did not know that she got that popular. But I think that's amazing. She has been doing a lot of stuff on Hershey, Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania. So, is that where she lives? She lives in Pennsylvania. Oh. I think she... I think she lived in Florida for some reason. I'm not for sure, but she's originally from Pennsylvania. Oh, so I remember her from. Um, yeah, yeah, I like Megan. Yeah, she's very sweet. So, but that is going to do it. Thank you guys all for joining us, and I hope you all have a good evening. And we'll see you tomorrow night for AFA Top Banana Trivia, where we'll be playing random trivia. Like I said, it'll be every other week that we have something themed. So, but don't miss us tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. And uh, I hope to see you all there. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Hey, Margie. Hey. Oh, my boy. Hey.